Now let's talk about the cloud. Many of you have heard this term. Some of you may have some concept of what it is. I actually think one of the best ways to explain this is with a silly t-shirt that I see quite often. And it says, there is no cloud. There's just someone else's computer. And that's actually true. The cloud is a broad general concept. It's only been around for a few years. But in general, what it means is utilizing computers that are located somewhere beyond your actual physical location for services. Let's look at a couple examples. Let's look at a typical scenario. Let's say we have a manufacturing company called Acme Industries. This company has their physical headquarters, big building. This company also wants to have a website. And it's going to be a rather large, complex website. Every single product they make, whether it's a giant anvil or a fake roadway that you paint onto the side of a cliff, all of these products need to be featured on the website. So they have to make a decision. Are they going to have an actual web server in their building and have a person who runs that website who's in their building? Let's call them the webmaster. They could do that. They could go out and buy a large computer that's been optimized as a web server. You can buy a web server. You can go onto Amazon right now and buy a web server. Let's say they do that. They're quite expensive. And guess what? They generate a lot of heat. And they usually need a special room with lots of air conditioning to cool that machine down. Because remember, the computer in here is potentially handling thousands of people logging into the web server at once to check out Acme's products. And every time someone logs in, work is done by that computer, which actually, because it uses electricity, generates heat. These computers put off a lot of heat. You may have had the experience of touching your laptop or an actual desktop computer and feeling lots of heat generated from it. Multiply that times about three to 500 sometimes, and now you have a server. They can put off a lot of heat. So now you've got this big special room you have to construct and an air conditioning system that it cannot go down because if it's down for more than about a half an hour, this thing can overheat and shut down and cause damage. There's a lot to this. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing this. This is how it was done for decades. If someone needed a very powerful computer or computers on premises at their site, if you will, then they would build a facility to put them in. They'd buy the servers, the computers. They would hire somebody to manage the physical equipment and the actual content on those computers. And they managed it all in-house. Or again, the word is on-premises. Premises is your actual location or your home, the place you're operating from. Well, about 10 years ago, the idea came out of a concept called the cloud. It wasn't called the cloud at first, but this is the concept. Let's say you're a company that just wants to do the following. You just want to buy a bunch of servers and you want to rent them out. Acme, instead of doing all this and managing everything in-house, could say, hey, could you dedicate one of your servers to be an Acme server? And We'll direct all the traffic of all our internal employees who need it and all of our external users who want to check out all of our products. We'll direct all that traffic over to your server and you manage it for us. You keep it in a secure facility that's got all the proper equipment and air conditioning. And we'll just make sure that we change out the files on there as we need be. But we don't want to have to deal with that physical hardware anymore. Can you do that for us? And the companies looked at it and went, oh, wow, well, we can buy these better if we buy them in bulk, buy them cheaper. We can have a big old facility that's its sole purpose is just to keep all these servers running well. And if we economize on it and hire someone that's an expert in those, we could have one guy run a whole bunch of servers and then we rent them out and we can make money. Hmm, cool. So they did it. Now, this is one example of the cloud, but it's a very common one. And again, the basic concept, an individual or a company can essentially rent out physical hardware owned by someone else and located wherever that company wants to put it to perform computing services for them. And that computing service can be something like hosting their website. It can be running different programs for the company. But the point is this, now that that thing isn't physically located where you are, 
you lose the direct oversight of the actual physical equipment, but you gain a lot less money. It costs less money for you to get that service. And you also don't have to have dedicated employees. So again, there's the basic concept of the cloud and there's a lot more to it. You'll learn a lot more. You're probably doing a lot of development that involves the cloud, but there's the essential concept. One final note about the cloud. It isn't going away. This concept of essentially leasing out or farming out the physical hardware you're going to use is becoming more and more an integral part of how companies and individuals do business. As an example, as a software developer, you can actually do the following. The computer programs that you use to make computer programs can actually be hosted out on a server here in the cloud. And you, from your computer, can log in there and operate that software on someone else's computer. You can create software using special programs that are designed to make software. And you're not even doing it on your machine. You're using a machine in the cloud. Now, you do need access to the internet to do that. Because that's how you're going to connect to this remote computer. But you can do that. It's a relatively common practice for software developers. So get used to the cloud. It's going to be around a while.